here and let you make these statements. Uh, not to get too mean, Malcolm. I read your book, David and Goliath. Of course you don't <laughs> want to hear no it. End? I'm sorry, it's not my fault, it's yours. And your fact check. Hello guys, what's up? Hi guys, you know, you guys are feeling good. Welcome back to the show now, this is your couple of real simple. We're going to be watching a very quick clip by Douglas Murray and a UK journalist gets into a heated argument it really got heated like you wish you saw this one earlier it got heated to the point this way <laughs> i bet like <laughs> okay let's just check this clip out and let's see how it goes let's go the new york times uh and the entire basically mainstream media spent years following a fake story about donald trump being in league with vladimir putin to fix the 2016 election it was a wrong story. We have a leaked uh, audio tape that was published in Slate.com where the editor of the New York Times says, well, we got caught a little flat-footed on that one because, um, you know, we, our readers who want Donald Trump to go away um, are going to be disappointed about this. They, he says, we built our entire newsroom around one story, and they got it wrong. Uh, there's no way to defend that kind of inaccuracy, and it only happens if everybody wants so badly for it to be true that they overlook all the guardrails that are in place. No serious journalist that I know looked at that story and didn't have qualms about it. I was greatly amused by the affection Matt Tiabi, Tiabi has for the age of Walter, Cron, Ron, well, age of Walter Cronkite, um, which he seemed to hold up as a kind of golden moment. In that moment, the mainstream media was populated entirely by white men from elite schools. Um, why you would have had such affection and say that's the gold standard and we should trust the mainstream media precisely at the moment when the mainstream media is least representative is really puzzling to me. I would point out <laughs> that the height of Walter Cronkite's reign in American media, neither people like Michelle and I wouldn't have been on the stage, right? We weren't part of the conversation. So I don't know why uh, we should hold such a kind of affection for that moment. Malcolm, you did a little nasty uh, jab there, I noticed, at Matt, by trying to pretend that Matt Taibbi is desperate for the era of white men in broadcasting. It takes a certain chutzpah to make that claim, but I don't see any reason why that is the case with Matt. I don't think that you are hankering desperately for a world of white news presenters. You never, we've only just met, but you didn't give off that vibe to me. Uh, <laughs> Yes, there are processes. Fact-checking is important. I do it. Um, I hire fact-checkers to do it. Uh, but okay. uh, it, this is not the standard process for all mainstream media institutions anymore. We, we don't do it as much as we used to. Uh, part of that is for financial reasons. Wait, I can't, I can't sit here and let you make these statements that without any kind of... We don't do that as much as we used to for financial reasons. I mean, I worked at The New Yorker. The New Yorker, if anything, has spends more money on fact-checking today than it did in the past. Uh, I would have thought, with my first book, I didn't hire a fact-checker, but then I observed the number of errors in it. I also observed that the, the nature of the journalism world in which we live, uh, the, uh, the scrutiny of journalists is such that it's really perilous not to have a fact checker. And so I, now I have fact mm. checkers. Many other people it's very important. observe the same very thing. Important. That there is now so much um, attention paid to the accuracy of things that writers say that you'd better make sure you don't have errors in your... So, I mean, I, Matt, I understand that you do have this wonderful nostalgia for the way things used to be, but I, I, I think that you need to fact check some of your nostalgic notions about the wonderful world of the 1950s. Um, who was watchdogging the New, the, uh, the New York Times in the 1950s? N nobody was. It was, it was a, a tiny little universe of people now watchdog institutions like that, and so they have a higher commitment to the truth. So first of all, hold on, on Matt, let, let's bring Douglas in on this. Doug I just want to hear his voice. Doug is speechless. I'm never me. speechless. <laughs> He's not spe How would you say speechless? not a problem I suffer from. Um, no. <laughs> I can't sit here and listen to Malcolm Gladwell talking about fact-checking and the importance of it. Uh, not to get too mean, Malcolm. I read your book, David and Goliath. 
The chapter on Northern Ireland is more filled with inaccuracies than any other chapter in a non-fiction book I have read. Mm. That out was like that. Oh, the right Damn. hand! <laughs> <laughs> written a yeah, it goes. Not very well selling, but widely acclaimed book on Northern Ireland myself. <laughs> my book on Northern Ireland didn't sell anywhere near as much as yours did, Malcolm. But, but mine was filled with facts. And well, now. Your, your chapter on Northern Ireland was so filled with inaccuracies. Irish historians ripped it apart. Would That's that you had sad. a fact checker, Malcolm. Dude. Would that you did your own research. You, but anyway, let me get Dennis, back you have, to another, Dennis, another you point. Have a wonder, you have, I, I must say, you, you, you do a very good job of it. But you, you must say, you do have a tendency to accuse those who disagree with your no, no, opinion. No, no, it's not disagreement. Of being, of being it's not un, disagreement, of Malcolm. Lacking you of didn't know. Accuracy. You Shit. <laughs> no, that the provisional IRA were responsible for 60% of the deaths in the Troubles. There were basic things that, you just didn't not, know, that, Malcolm. No. I'm sorry, it's not my fault, it's yours and your fact-checkers. Shit. Um, the, I didn't know let me, the function let me just, of this debate uh, let me was just, to rehash uh, the accuracy of a chapter uh, in a book. Well, one <laughs> started talking ago. about fact-checkers. I'm simply saying, why don't you employ some? I suspect... I, I suspect your publishers. Was, but why, I don't I, why don't I make the point I wanted to make other than that? Briefly, uh, Briefly yes. <laughs> Good Lord. This is getting Take heated. Come to Biden's story. Oh, here we okay. go. I'm sorry. <laughs> a very, <laughs> of course you don't is want to hear no it. there no end to the kind no, of Twitter of stuff you, don't you guys to, are going to dredge up Of course you don't want to hear it, Malcolm. <laughs> of course you wouldn't, because it goes against your ideological pr uh, pr uh, presumptions. <laughs> that story was a big story, okay? It was a big story. The New York Post, which I write for, but the New York Post, America's oldest uh, newspaper, uh, was silenced on Twitter, was silenced across the media. You know, the Washington Post has now picked it up. It's saying that, yeah, the laptop's true. But why didn't the media pick it up before? Why didn't they call up people? Why didn't they check whether the emails were accurate? Because they didn't want uh, mm -hmm. Biden to lose the election. He was their guy. And they weren't going to screw that up. But I do want to talk about they wouldn't even try it or date. I was telling Malcolm, we were talking this morning, and I said, I bet they're going to want to talk about the Hutton <laughs> And he said to me, really? Who would care about that? Yeah, but, right. I, but I... The security experts who, met, who examined the data for the post struggled to reach definitive conclusions about the contents as a whole, including whether all of it originated from a single computer or could have been assembled from files from multiple computers and put on the portable drive. So the media has covered this, but they have also been, um, I think, careful given the fact that this stuff still cannot be authenticated. And I spoke at the very beginning about the media kind of trying to self-correct, sometimes to a fault. Malcolm, you're kind of, oh my God, what a yawneru the whole Hunter Biden story is. How boring to talk about the idea of corruption at an epic scale in the first family. How boring. Um, who would want to harp on about that? Uh, uh, let me try the counterfactual on you. Let me try the counterfactual on you. It's October 2020. And a huge number of emails are suddenly dumped, revealing unbelievable scandal in the Trump family. I, I don't want to concentrate on the dick pics and the crack and stuff. Never mind about Don Jr. if he'd been doing that. Let's just focus on the, on the emails. There was a very easy way, Michelle, as you know, to certify whether this stuff was true. You could call up anyone on the email chains and say, did you get this email? They didn't bother with any of that stuff. They'd have been excited as hell across most of the mainstream media, media, if this had been emails from Donald Trump's son saying, and I'm no Trump fan, let's not get into that cheap rut. But if it had been, <laughs> if it had been uh, Don, Don Jr. saying to his ch child, you've no idea what I've done for this family, the demeaning things I've gone through, I have to give half of everything I earn to my dad. Oh, you're Nauru, definitely, definitely. Who'd care about that? No, the point is simply that this was one of the occasions in recent years where the mainstream media showed its transparency as a political yeah. organization. That's why we care. Okay. Well, you know, I was struck once again in listening to our opponents by um, how much their arguments resemble the kind of classic structure of a conspiracy theory. Uh, a conspiracy theory is a theory in which one assumes a degree of unanimity and collaboration amongst one's foes, right? You, uh, the conspiracist speaks of those who disagree with himself or herself as if they had a single voice, 
And there are numerous really unpleasant examples of this. This is not one of those. This is a much milder, um, uh, more naive variant on the traditional conspiratorial uh, model. But nonetheless, when, so when Mad and Doug speak about the mainstream media, they're, they're acting as if it is, there's a big room possibly in New York or in Washington, D.C., or maybe in between, so that each party has equal access to the room, I mean, which everyone gathers every morning and makes up the agenda for the day, right? And the people fly in from the big news networks, and someone from CBC comes down, and this cabal of high-minded, well-paid, elite white, as it turns out, journalists, some of them, the, the ones that Matt seems to have such affection for, gather oh together... God and set the agenda for the country. It's so strange hearing you debate, Malcolm, because you listen to nothing that your opponents say. <laughs> it's quite extraordinary. I've What's it up before. with Douglas? Never quite so badly as it, as it occurs in you. Um, <laughs> you keep saying things that neither of us have said, and then you try to pathologize what we say. What you decide I... to say things like, oh, Wait, it's a conspiracy theory. If it comes from this side, it's a conspiracy theory. You see, we don't do our research. Mm -hmm. That's just, we're just conspiracy theorists. Mild, apparently mild dose of it, he says, in his excellent um, uh, 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 medical-like analysis of his opponents. Uh, we just have a mild dose. Now, you know, Malcolm, why don't you listen to what comes of our, out of our mouths and try to learn something from it, as I am with you this evening? But at the moment, all I get is you dismissing every single story we come up with, every egregious <clears throat> failure of the mainstream media. I've given you a def definition of what I think of as the mainstream media, so your attempt to claim that we haven't answered it yet is just another straw man in your massive legion of straw men you keep creating this evening. But I beg you to actually yeah. consider the fact that what we are describing is, even if you think not as accurate as you would like, an expression of a problem that is going on in our societies. Functioning, functioning liberal democracies need to have trust in their media. And the best that your side has been able to come up with so far tonight is to say we get things wrong quite often, but you should trust us. Murray and Taibbi spotlight a pivotal change in media strategy, the move from targeting a broad audience to catering to specific demographics. This approach while financially beneficial for media outlets, has led to a polarization of news consumption. They point out that by feeding audiences news that aligns with their preconceived notions, media outlets have abandoned the pursuit of truth for the comfort of confirmation bias. This strategy not only undermines journalistic integrity... The truth be told is that media have a lot of roles to play in the society because we get to hear our news from them. We get to know what's happening in the community from them. We get to know the happenings of the government. So when the media starts giving us something wrong or something different from what is happening in the community or the society, we get to listen to them and agree. Douglas Murray, Douglas Murray was trying to pinpoint that the media is actually sweeping a lot of things under the carpet. A lot of things we don't know about, they polish it, make it look different, and give it to us. You know? So, but this is opponents really took a heated one because I think he came unprepared. <laughs> but the glass Murray just literally dismantled him and made him look like literally stupid. You know? The media has a lot of roles to play in the community. And they shouldn't be sweeping everything on the carpet. We need to hear what is really happening. They should stop supporting side. You know, th that's literally one of the funny things. Like, the media are literally the best and most political people I know so far because they get to politically support the person that pays the highest money. They support the person that they like. When it comes to media and politics and when it comes to um, election and voting, the media tends to put attention to the like the best party or the party they like so there's a lot of things media are actually doing wrong that they actually need to correct and douglas murray could tell on this end anyways let me know your um insight about this video let me know your recommendation give me your feedback about this video i'll be so happy to check your comment out thank you guys so much for watching keep watching and watch out for more peace and god bless you